In today's session, let's take a deeper dive into the health benefits of sauna and hot tub therapy and focus on heat shock proteins. These are intracellular proteins that actually initiate many of the ascribed health benefits linked with thermal therapy or heat therapy, i.e. going in the sauna, whether it's infrared or a finished sauna, going in a steam room, a hot bath, a hot tub, any form of heat as, as an adaptive stress actually has some benefits. And part of those benefits are linked to activation of these intracellular proteins called heat shock proteins. And because we've talked so much about sauna therapy in the past, all of the benefits, we haven't really done a deep dive into these heat shock proteins. And it turns out that the heat shock proteins are key mediators into all these health benefits. And I'm talking about improved blood flow, uh, relaxation and dilation of the vessels that lead to a reduction in blood pressure that lead to actually get this, an enhancement in fat loss, an upregulation in metabolic rate, an improvement in blood sugar handling. A lot of people don't know, and this paper dives into all the nuances here, friends, about the reduction in glycosylated hemoglobin, also known as, as the hemoglobin A1C. Just several weeks, we're talking three weeks of going in a hot tub, can drop your hemoglobin A1C by a full percentage point. So you can go from pre-diabetic to normal glycemic in literally three weeks, friends, by just going in a hot tub several days a week. So we're gonna dive into the details, and I just wanna share with you the big picture overview. So as you can see here, there's an individual. This person is in the sauna. They're getting hot. As you can see here, part of the mechanisms that lead to these adaptations are an increase right in the middle here, HSP70. That's what we're going to focus in on today because it turns out that heat shock protein 70 activates or uh, all sorts of beneficial processes that are linked with the many health benefits linked with sauna therapy. So the process that I want to focus in on is the nitric oxide synthase. So the, the activation of endothelial nitric oxide synthase right below the HSP70, that is linked with the vasodilation and all of the cardiovascular benefits. We know that erectile dysfunction, endothelial dysfunction, hypertension, these are all sort of a manifestation of a underlying issue within the vascular endothelium. Unfortunately, a, a lot of men suffer from this. I know, I know guys who, before intercourse, before they go on a date, they're chugging L-arginine. They're taking pre-workout supplements. And I just tell them, look, you've got to go in the sauna several days a week, improve your cardiovascular health, and you don't have to worry about erectile issues. And so this is very important for both men and women and couples and marriages, fertility as well, you know, just going in the sauna uh, and so forth. You see lipolysis here. So this is the upregulation of the ability of your fat cells to release fat. And then most important, I think, or, or equally important to all of these, is the improvement in insulin sensitivity. Metabolic health is just, unfortunately, it's, metabolic health issues are rampant in our society. Very important to improve insulin sensitivity. So what I would like to do is focus on some of these details and, and give you guys like a, a big picture overview uh, and, and sort of talk about, you know, how long should you go in the sauna? How many minutes, the frequency, the pros and the cons. But first, I want to welcome you all back. Thank you for being here. It's Mike Mutzel. As always, my friends, you could do us a huge favor uh, by hitting that like button, leaving a comment that will tell other people who are interested in improving their health and uh, erections and lowering blood pressure uh, and preventing vascular issues and, and neurologic decline that they should watch this video and learn more about the importance of sauna therapy, infrared sauna therapy and hot tub therapy. Also, I want to thank this video's show sponsor, Skillshare.com. This is the largest online resource to help you understand things like personal finance, understand how to be more productive, understand how to edit videos. I learned how to use and navigate through Photoshop. So I do a lot of my own like Instagram content and so forth. Just save time. I can quickly like throw up a, a meme or something. So Skillshare is amazing. They have sponsored many of our videos over the years. And so they're a great partner helping us create content and helping you become more productive. So I've been diving into a course all about productivity with Ali. He's a medical doctor and he's a YouTuber as well. And I think it's very important, my friends, because we all know that we have goals to write books. We have goals to start businesses. We have goals to read more. But how many of us actually pursue those goals? Because we're so distracted, right? Because we're not productive enough. We're distracted with Instagram, with messaging and so forth. Ali will help you to become more productive. So the first 1,000 people that click the link below can get a free trial over at Skillshare.com. That's Skillshare. Click the link below. It will take you there to get a free trial. I would highly encourage you to check out this course and join me in that course. There's 81,000 other individuals there. Again, using the link below, you get a free trial membership, really low cost if you want to continue after that. But let's continue on and talk about Heat Shock Protein 70 and dive into these details. I think it's really important. So key points, key takeaways that you need to understand. Heat therapy is a promising tool for the prevention of obesity, diabetes, and heart disease. Okay, how many doctors have talked to you about, oh, hey, Sally, I know you're overweight. 
I know you're pre-diabetic, and I know you have hypertension. How many doctors and health professionals, bless their hearts, are prescribing hot tub therapy and sauna therapy? It's very safe, and it's very effective. Three days per week, 15 minutes per session, my friends. Now, people ask, what about the, how hot does it need to be? You just need to get hot. That's it. When you get hot, you start to sweat. That sweat response is created by actually activating these heat shock proteins that is increasing the endothelial nitric oxide that is dilating your vessels. That dilation and contraction, as we've talked about, the thermal stress is basically mimicking or mirroring the benefits of exercise without having to exercise. Again, I know some people don't like exercise. I'm a huge fan of exercise, but if you don't like exercise, at least sauna three days per week for 15 minutes, okay? Now, let's dive into the details. They say, the mechanism involved in heat-induced uh, or elicited involvements appear to be connected to the uh, increments in body temperature and the chronic transient elevation of nit nitric oxide, initiating a cycle that will induce heat shock protein 70 expression. It turns out that HSP 70, heat shock protein 70, is like a central node and is linked with all of the myriad benefits associated with getting hot including but not limited to increasing the nitric oxide that I mentioned. Okay, let me just pause here. If you've ever been to GNC or a bodybuilding type store, pre-workouts and NO boosters are like the top selling thing. You really feel them when you take like a bolus dose of L-arginine with citrulline and so on. There's a lot of vasodilation that can occur. Uh, you really start to feel that. So uh, going in the sauna can, can do that. And part of the mechanism there is activating this heat shock protein. But that's not all because we talked about blood pressure and then we also talked about diabetes and fat loss. There's intracellular mediators related to metabolism of glucose called AMPK. That is activated by these heat shock proteins as is another one called AKT. So we're not going to dive into the details here of all the nuances and the molecular benefits, but essentially what these scientists are saying here is heat therapy is a validated and safe therapy for the treatment of high blood pressure, diabetes, and obesity. And they say that three 15-minute sessions is a safe method in obese and hypertensive and diabetic people and is an efficient time-tested therapy for these folks. Uh, really important things here that we're going to go into. So the authors say, we believe that the increments in body temperature and the chronic transient elevations of nitric oxide will initiate a cycle that will induce heat shock protein 70 uh, expression. And this will lead to short-lived and also enhanced tone of, of nitric oxide. As a result, more nitric oxide is produced involving vasometricity and also vasoprotection under insulin resistance. So protecting the blood vessels from the complications linked with insulin resistance. There's also increases in tetrahydrobioptin, BH4, which is a cofactor for all of the NO uh, synthetic enzymes. So they say together, you know, in conclusion, higher nitric oxide levels uh, are, are very important and have metabolic and cardioprotective effects, which is very important. So heat therapy uh, is a way to improve the health of your vessels, your metabolism, and also has benefits related to erectile uh, issues that are common in many, many people and blood pressure. So again, I don't know why this isn't talked about more, friends. It's, it's you know, people ask me, you know, what about infrared sauna? What about a finished sauna? What about hot tub? We've done videos on that before. Click the link below to associated videos. But the important thing, my friends, is strive to befriend someone who has a sauna or join a health club that has one so that you can access this several days per week. People ask about what's the best time. I would say try, if you can, in the afternoon or the evening. If the morning's the only time you can do it, that's fine. But from a circadian rhythm standpoint, your body temperature is higher later in the day. So that can be a time when you do it. So please, my friends, spread the message that thermal therapy, that heat therapy is validated, that it's safe, that it has many, many benefits. Uh, and as, as one thing that I forgot to mention, heat shock protein 70 is decreased in insulin resistance, obesity, and diabetes, okay? So this is a way, again, the 21st century lifestyle is putting all these pressures molecularly and cellularly on us. Uh, and this is just another way to sort of ameliorate some of that, right? And reverse course that. So get hot on purpose. Plus, if you start now, you can help to be more acclimated by the time summer comes around. We know that heat strokes happen. We know that people are just, you know, they're used to living in air conditioning and then they go outside and it's really hot and they like, they don't know how to handle it. Getting hot on purpose can make you more resilient so that you can survive the summer a little bit better. So as always, thank you for watching. Thank you for Skillshare for sponsoring this video and content like this. And we will catch you in a future episode down the road. Have an awesome day.